Good. Richard, uh, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, so the reason for the interview is uh, basically to understand if the TRIPS community we are going to the right direction and if we can become, that's what we want to, an important resource, uh, actually a free resource for your company and the whole space. Now you are very, you know, you're really expert in the whole vacation rental space. So I'm really happy you can share with us your thoughts. Uh, maybe you can start by presenting who you are and what you do, just for people who don't know you. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, historically, I've been a, a, a private owner and then a manager of a, uh, a couple of uh, large portfolios of properties, which have subsequently been sold. Uh, in the interim period, I uh, co-founded a company called uh, Rentivo. Uh, of which I still remain a director and chairman, and that was a company uh, that currently produces technology to support the um, management structure for vacation rentals. So PMS, channel manager, connections, payment solutions, distribution, creation of uh, aggregated websites, uh, and all the stuff that actually allows the, the data fluidity to run through the system. More recently, I've, uh, I've become um, vice president of European operations for Stay Alfred, which is yep. a tech vacation rental uh, and short term rental company out of the US uh, with uh, ambitions to expand into Europe. Um, and this is all these markets are beginning to blend together. So anything that pulls in the opportunity to uh, reduce marketing costs is of primary importance to the entire industry. Great. So you are uh, you are also an advisor for trips um, regarding every integration, uh, like integration system. This is like your background. And uh, we haven't used you a lot so far, to be honest, because it's really early uh, for these kind of things. But we're getting closer to discussions about how to make it easy for uh, companies to connect to trips and how trips can become um, a layer on which anyone can can build their integrations right so our, our aim is to become an alternative uh, platform where everybody can be connect to the apis uh, in a permissionless way so um, thank you for being an advisor and uh, we're gonna we're gonna use you more if you if you're still available in the future and uh, you're also a, a partner with Rentivo. It means that you committed, it's a soft commitment uh, to, co to connect to trips once it's ready, right? So thank you very much for all these, uh, um, you know, the, your availability on this. Yeah, well, we've, we've always, uh, you know, the, the guys in Rentivo are always looking uh, ahead, essentially. And uh, I think, like all of us, we've uh, we've missed the boat on many occasions because we haven't been forward thinking enough about what's going on within industries. I mean, you can you can look back if if you're uh, if you're an investor and you might miss the Google trip or the uh, the Amazon trip or the Facebook trip. So, you know, uh, everywhere there's news about uh, blockchain uh, associated with that. There's a lot of noise about payment solutions connected to it. So I think in one of your previous uh, videos, uh, you mentioned uh, Libra as well, which uh, right. invested in mybooking.com, et cetera. So right. this is a very hot space. I just don't think anybody really understands how it can actually roll out. I, I agree. Yes, there's a lot of confusion. Yeah. And it does have it's a it's a it's by the people for the people, which is a, a, a fantastic thing. Uh, and, you know, you can. It's very difficult for anybody to argue against that, I think, because uh, it's an open space. It's not a closed space that you're developing. And um, the closed spaces, I've no doubt, will start appearing fairly soon as well. Right. But I, I'm sure you've had lots of questions about the, the fundamentals of how do I uh, engage and embrace uh, what you're doing at TRIPS in terms of generating bookings, and then all the complexities attached to that. So payments yeah. and reviews, etc. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a lot of uh, hype a couple of years ago, and then it kind of quiet down. So like, 
people are not asking too much now, which is great because we can concentrate on actually doing the work. And uh, I remember you talking about speaking about blockchain pretty early on. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you mentioned it already in September. Uh, sorry, in um, yeah, in Florence at Antonio's event the first time in 2017 you were on stage and you Vanessa did it too and I talked to her the other day and you also mentioned the blockchain at the time and uh how was it that's correct right I'm not I'm not mistaken then I came to no, speak no, you're, to you yeah, yeah you're yeah. correct I made a presentation and uh and then I I I ducked a presentation last year and handed it over to you right then then we did it together in Como last year yeah and uh, how was your because I know you were involved and I think your sons are involved. H how was has it been your history since two years ago, like on the blockchain? Have you kept an eye on it? Did you do any work? What is your perception in general two years after that? I think uh, there, there was a lot of a uh, lot of hype and speculation around it uh, two years ago. So uh, like most things in, in the world, uh, people will try and monetize it and game it. Uh, and we saw that through all the ICOs. So uh, yeah, my family are a bit uh, tech minded and commercial minded. And um, one of them became involved in uh, writing wallets for, uh, for a particular company. Um, we became involved with uh, Bees Nest as well which uh, did a small raise and an ICO in the US. Um, and I think the, the reason we got involved on a technical level is, is because of the frustrations that happen across the industry in terms of uh, losing income uh, and being, um, well, being pressurized by the major marketing channels to, to give up more control and to give up more income. If you take any companies um, P&L, you'll see there's a line in there these days, uh, and it's a marketing expense. Mm -hmm. I think the word marketing is being transmitted to OTA, so you'll see OTA expense on every single line, and it's almost an accepted part of the business now, except when you look how much money that is, it, it's substantial to a small business. So we get very interested because... Yeah, in a, in a world where it's open, everybody has free access, it does offer opportunities for uh, entrepreneurial people to create other ways to generate bookings of better value. So I know that's not what you're doing, but you're opening up avenues for very bright entrepreneurial thinking individuals to create new um, ways to deliver bookings and to deliver experiences. So. Oh, it's called a channel, but it's a it, it's a it's a new way of approaching a fairly mature market. Yeah, the the first thing you will think when you look at trips is that it's a new channel, but it is actually one first instance of a new ecosystem. So it is open. It means that anybody could launch something similar pretty easily. And what I see in the next years is uh, several companies doing something like we're doing. Uh, probably hundreds and hopefully thousands of experiments and hopefully one or a few of these will stick all right and so we're gonna probably go through the same thing we've seen in 2012 more or less when all this money came in and you you saw Airbnb starting and then Wimdu and then house trip and then nine flats uh, most of these are, are now gone or, or irrelevant so there was this moment it lasted two three years where the VC money allowed other experiments and then there were clear winners and the clear winners are Airbnb, Booking and maybe Expedia, depending on the market. And uh, we're going to probably go through another renaissance of, of experiments and TRIPS is just one of these experiments, maybe the first in specifically for this market. But uh, the way I see it is we should all together try to, to encourage other experiments too. Uh, because who, who can say that we, you know, we found the exact, the, the perfect balance of all the, you know, how, how a, a portal, how a booking platform should be done. So you can have many doubts about how trips will bring a solution to the market. But I have no doubts about how the whole ecosystem will be, will bring solutions to the market. So um, 
for for any company who wants to put this forward maybe trips is the easy way to start but you always have to look at alternatives okay so yeah and if this works we're gonna have a lot of money which is released you know it's taken away from is released on the market so what i want to ask you actually is how what kind of opportunities you see for your companies the ones you're working in once the blockchain the open blockchain becomes you know a reality and starts bringing bookings yeah well, you mentioned like saving money but is that is that all or you see something more well i think you have to take uh, two perspectives on this in my in my um chairmanship of the rentiva the tech stuff that's an opportunity to to distribute to increase the opportunity for managers or anybody to actually uh, engage in another environment that, that might uh, see benefits to them and there's only really one benefit to be had from management companies who are working their uh, their socks off on a daily basis and that is is to uh, receive bookings essentially and to have these uh, transmitted smoothly if you take something like uh, stay Alfred that you know is a is a, a larger urban downtown upmarket travel company which is uh, which is a fantastic business their goal and aim is to increase the uh, the size of their portfolio uh, to inter integrate prop tech which is kind of what you're talking about at the end of the day but actually all these systems run currently on on various simple parameters they're driven by reviews they're driven by exposure to the marketplace so if anything appears that says uh you know i'm getting 20 or 30 bookings 40 bookings i think it was vanessa said there are some channels that are doing a lot of bookings on a very local level yeah you know people wake up mm. and at some point uh, that waking up cascades into uh, um, into a stressed environment where everybody wants to get on board very quickly. Mm. Uh, and that means you need technical connections, you need APIs, you need to understand the entire process. And I think at the moment, uh, the everybody would love to see something else. They'd love to see it at half the value it currently is. Um, but I'm pretty sure you're being asked the same questions every time. You're being asked, well, what about payments? You know, fiat currency dominates the planet currently. Uh, so if you looked at business, that was just going to be a uh, that was going to be a B token. But actually, that morphed itself, of course, into fiat currencies, because unless you can pay in fiat, you don't get the majority of, of the world's money being processed through you. So what I what I found very interesting about trips is that it's not been a fast ICO uh, behind the scenes VC invested business. It's been a very slow burn with a lot of uh, enthusiasm, understanding and, and essentially free, you know, which is fantastic because you're not being influenced, you know, yeah. and it's the influence that will kill any of these enterprises because at the end of the day, everybody wants to make some money. Right. No, no one, no managers doing it for the love. I can assure you, particularly uh, at the end of August, they're probably right now figuring out if they should start selling. Right. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, I mean, it, it's always going to be looked at commercially from people who are at the very sharp end of this industry. So anything that can can ease their lives generate extra margin which eases lives because there's very little in the chain these days it's got to be it's got to be an opportunity but it's all done through data it's all mm. done through connections you know uh you i know right now you can put your properties on uh as individual properties into trips which you know is the starting point that's owners direct 25 years ago or vr vrbo 25 years ago you know, and look what happened to them. You know, they, they've all sold out. Um, but as this moves forward, I mean, I've got a question for you. Go ahead. Which, which hunts the industry, really. And that is, we have uh, we have Airbnb, we have HomeAway, we have Booking.com, we have Trip, we have uh, TripAdvisor, we have a uh, hundred through the channel managers. There is no industry standard 
for property designations, uh, you know, amenities, facilities, etc., etc. There's no standard definition of, of stays within the industry. There are different tax routes. There are there are different pricing regimes. There are all there is a complete basket case of of data formats out mm. there. It would be fantastic to actually almost look at saying, well, there are three data formats. You know, you're a private Airbnb, you're an industrial manager, you are a uh, crossover hotel vacation rental business. It'd be nice if the industry could get together and figure out how to do that because we're all working in different data sets, of course. So you're suggesting to uh, create a standard, right? So we, we, which anybody, anybody can use the same standard, right? Yeah, I'm not yeah. going to steal the idea. I mean, the first person who mentioned it years right. ago was uh, Seb at Booking Sync. Okay. We were talking about these things because we're all we were all pulling our hair out, saying, "Okay, well, here's another API, and it's going off to another OTA." Different, yeah. Uh, oh my God, it's different again. You know, this yeah. one does it this way, and, and the power comes from the top. So you can't ask them to change their API. You have to go with what is being presented. Of course, to, yeah. To yeah, yeah. And so, are these companies trying to uh, make their API the standard? Are all of them trying to do this? to get this kind of power of having this the standard made by them or is it just random? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. Yeah. I think uh, a number of them have, have recognized that it's a lot more complicated than when they first envisaged doing this type of business. So Airbnb is probably a perfect example. It's become it's become more mature and it's become more involved in it. Uh, HomeAway have been in it for years and years and years and they've they've taken on board a lot of the information and and are, are working in a, a more composite manner with, with the likes of uh, vacation rental businesses. So by getting them all in the same room together and saying, do you think we should have one? And it's unlikely to happen. Mm -hmm. So it's, well, just, it's just, you know, blue sky thinking. Really. Right, right. Well, I don't know. Uh, we are going to get to the point where we have to define the, the blockchain standard for this kind of data. And because it's going to be open from day one, yeah. Uh, maybe it has, you know, if, if the whole ecosystem grows a lot, maybe it will become the, the, the standard because it's open in a way like iCal became kind of a standard for calendars, even if it's not the best, right? Uh, but we're going to have to talk about this a bit later on because you're the expert on that. Um, of course, we don't have the silos mentality of collecting data and then uh, giving access to others, the data is, our role is to make the data accessible to everybody in a permissionless way. So the standard is like a precondition for that, right? So if you, if you start having many blockchain companies having different standards, they won't be able to connect with each other. So just to give you an idea, everything which is gonna happen in the Ethereum ecosystem for vacation rentals, it is going to have the same standard for sure because we have to be connected from day one. So when somebody, let's say somebody opens something like trips in, in UK and we have, we are already able to use these listings if they give us permission without any integration, it's already on the same ecosystem on the same platform. Yeah. yeah. So the, the logic behind is already open and, and standardized how the whole industry, you know, if the whole industry follows or not, I don't know, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that the moment we become relevant, they're going to fight us to the nail. I mean, <laughs> not us, but the whole ecosystem. So the last thing I expect is for them to accept the standard. But yeah, we're going to have to discuss about this. This is, uh, you know, we're going to really be, uh, we're going to really need your help on this, you know. And if I understand correctly, your idea is that if we get a, a standard which everybody uses, everything becomes easier right for everybody at every level well it does doesn't it yeah, yeah. i mean your your all the data currently is sitting uh in a combination of uh, pms systems yeah. you know property management systems which should be called booking management systems or they're sitting on people's spreadsheets or they're sitting in in ota's uh own mini pms systems so you you need to access that data and if you're going to get it off individuals, then sure, they can put it in uh, on an individual level within the trip system. 
because that's that's the norm, that's the expectation, that's the easy way in. But the other 50% of the inventory, and I'm pretty sure you've seen all the roll-ups worldwide, you know, the likes of Sykes Cottages and Focassa and all those companies, they're all accruing. So, you know, more than 50% of the world's um, visible properties are going to be managed. And the only way they're going to find their way to trips is via APIs. Oh, that's definitely it, of course. Yeah. Then, and then, of course, you have the, the comeback to a PMS where a manager says, well, but I don't accept bookings within three days. And if I do, they've got to be at a 50% premium, you know, and I've got to take the whole of the money at the same time. And by the way, the middle day is priced at twice the price of the other two days because the middle day is a bank holiday. So you, you have the, all these little complications that need addressing on day one as you build this, uh, this infrastructure. Um, otherwise, you'll, you'll find barriers to entry. But it, it, the beauty of it is you have time to do it. You, you don't have anybody pressurizing you right now, apart from yourself, to actually put this in before Christmas and see vertical growth. Of course, yeah. yeah and, and that's the killer. So the way we were thinking is to simply start connecting to the APIs of some PMS and channel managers. So people who are already into these systems, they can flow into trips at the same time. That's yeah. the, the short term thinking. Uh, what you're here suggesting is like if we we could become a place where you actually you you deal with your data in, in the in the blockchain and then the blockchain brings it all over the other places. Is that correct? Well, it's, quite, it's quite possible if you yeah. build, have build a big enough architecture that takes right. all the data. Okay. So, you know, you've interviewed channel managers, but you've just become a channel manager. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, that, that, that's one of the ideas, like to become the easiest to the easiest channel manager, like a free one, where, which everybody's going to use. So all the other channel managers to adapt. But this is really not our focus because we haven't done the basics yet. But yeah, it is clear that unless we find a way for, and I would say almost everybody except single hosts to connect automatically, we won't get mass adoption. That, that's, that's clear in our minds. So yeah, we're not hoping everybody uploads manually their properties. That's, uh, that, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah but again, you, again, you have, you know, there are, there are issues all within this industry. I'm pretty sure we all wake up occasionally and think, why on earth did I get into this? You know, I was quite right. happy. I was quite happy doing biomedical stuff. Right. Uh, because it is incredibly complex. You get an owner put in a property app, but unless they get a booking, they'll just ignore their listing. They won't update the calendars. They won't update their prices. And, and that's, a, that's a common thread. So, yeah. you know, the the automated data stuff in terms of calendar and pricing is is the single most important part of the uh, the infrastructure of course so but you agree that this is possible to simply for us and i'm asking uh start by connecting to the channel manager so using the data they already have to yes, keep our yeah. listings updated right okay. yeah yeah okay. not sure okay. yeah yeah you know, but you're suggesting a further step which is like create a standard well i just think yeah, so it's blue sky thinking, and it's an ideal world. And I'm pretty sure if you got a bunch of uh, tech companies together, they'd probably all agree with you and say, "Yeah, it'd be really super cool if we could have an industry standard because we wouldn't all have to start connecting in different ways to different channels to different whatever." Yeah. You know. Although, I think as the the time has moved on, we we've seen a big consolidation of OTAs as well. Um, also, yeah. So, you know, there's there's uh, yeah, probably five big ones that 90% of all bookings come from. So that need to connect everywhere hundreds of times is is diminishing in many ways. Um, it's it's in flux. It's all in change continuously. Uh, but you know, the, the, you would just mention right now the approach of all the industry getting together and doing things. That that's what we want to do. We want to talk to the industry and say, okay. It is time we get together and we build an alternative platform. Of course, you keep on what you've been doing, but we build an alternative platform uh, together. Uh, this is done by in the industry. It's not VC funded, so we don't have the return on investment, which, you know, breathing it down our necks. And, and you're adding here the idea of also creating a standard. Do you think we as an industry could get together and agree on a standard getting without talking to the platforms are we on the same page on this 
or every company has different views. How do you uh, see this process going? That's very interesting. That's why I'm asking. I didn't think about I think, it. I mean, from conversations, yeah. it, it's an idealistic situation. I think a lot of tech companies would love to see. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 can you imagine? You know, another large marketing outlet appears, and and it uses the same formats for everything. You're down to you're down to a week's integration rather than potentially a year's integration. You know, it it it, it would. It would make everybody's life a lot easier. Whether it would, whether the people would actually get together and do it, I, I think it would be incredibly tough because there's a lot of legacy out there right now. Okay. And I, I think moving from the current legacy to a, a a new environment wouldn't happen overnight. I mean, you know, there's a hotel, there's a hotel standard, hmm. so there's no vacation rental standard. Yeah. But do you think that? Let's say that everybody agrees and let's do this standard. Will we agree on the specific of the standards or every market has different priorities? And so, you know, it's like, is the data really, uh, does it have in itself, by the way it's, it is formed around different markets, can it be standardized? How would, would you be able, if you were the king of the world, would you be able to standardize it yourself because you know all these markets? No, and not instantly. No, definitely not. I mean, if you just look at the simple things like uh, amenities, you know, there's probably the best part of eight or nine hundred amenities globally. Yeah. Okay. Whereas on, I don't know, maybe they're on Airbnb, you know, maybe 80, 90, something like that. And, and people call things different things. Yeah. But that's not that's not insurmountable. You can mm. call a hob a hob in one country and it'd be different in another country. The but at the end of the day, everything is is still the same process. It's about availability. It's about prices. It's about presenting your property, and it's about exposure and, and converting bookings and, and the follow up after that. That's the same in every country. Okay. It's just it's just the little bits of detail within that that need to be covered. So it yeah. can be done. It can be done. Okay, let's uh, let's let's it think can about be it. Done. Okay, when yeah, we get there, when we get there, we're gonna speak a little bit more on the specifics it's a nice project it's a nice idea we can bring out and say okay let's also build a standard yeah so, i mean i think if you if you got a, a a lot of tech companies in the same room you might find a lot of enthusiasm for it okay. the ones the ones who have to integrate and the ones who have to be integrated too okay ask the question and, and, and see what the feedback Great. is thank you for this idea all right. So, what what do you think are actually the dangers of um, for for the market from the blockchain? What can go wrong? I mean, everything can go wrong, of course. But what what can yeah. go wrong and not only kill the whole ecosystem, but damage also the, the existing ecosystem? Um, That's the existing. Uh, well, yeah. in terms of what can go wrong with. I mean, the blockchain is, you know, is, is in every single industry in some shape or form. And there's a lot of crazy ideas out there that people have become rich on ICOs out of. I mean, that was those businesses were never going to work, a lot of them. But the blockchain, you know, it's a distributed ledger. It, it's, it's, it's not a complicated thing to understand. You know, it can't be changed. It, it's distributed. It can be accessed in, in, from many, many locations. So I don't think anything is going to really disrupt that. What is going to be the very disruptive is who uses it and why they use it. So, you know, banks have looked at it, the OTAs have looked at it, and, you know, they use the name, they use the word blockchain as marketing as much as anything else because it's very hard for commercial uh, entities to understand how you can have a freely distributed system and actually pay your shareholders dividends. Mm. So the biggest threat is is obviously from the very large commercial, you know, the fangs of this world who who have already invested billions in the research and the strategy and the implementation of this at some point in the future. And the danger is that uh, a free living world might again be crushed by commerce. <laughs> well, in my view, because, I, you know, I don't believe in uh technologies which can come and make everybody happy forever what we're buying here is a, a decade or two of more balanced approach like the internet was very open at the beginning 
it was a democratizing force and now it's become a, surve a surveillance system, right? And it yeah. took 20 years to get there. Uh, the blockchain, in my view, is going to uh, free a lot of people and free a lot of, you know, give a lot of opportunities for 10 or 20 years. And then what they say, you know, George Orwell's pigs always win. Uh, they're going <laughs> to find a way to get, get back control, right? So I'm looking at 10, 20 years of balance, like of getting things back for the people, but not forever. Then we're going to have to disrupt again to find something else, right? Yeah, well, it's all about disruption, isn't it? It's, it that, is. it's that famous disruptive word. You know, uh, there's two sides to it. There's the there's the, the the moral side to it, and there's the commercial side to it. You know, if if you were given a hundred million right now, what would you do with it in developing trips? I can't say. I I know that if I get a hundred million, I don't know how my brain will process this. <laughs> yeah. So. That would be very dangerous. That would, be, would be really dangerous. It, yes, it would be yes. very dangerous yes, because yes. Uh, the people who lend you the hundred million would expect uh, significant returns. Okay, if I was given on the million by investors, that that's given. It, everything will will change. I mean, because we need a, a return. Yes, I was actually yeah. thinking if I get the hundred million from the sky, that would be yeah. dangerous. But if I get hundred million from VCs, that's the end of it. Uh, it's gonna be. On the surface, a democratizing, open, neutral, blah, blah, blah. But the behind the scenes, we're going to have to make money out of the very people using the platform. That's why we're not looking for VC money. That's the whole idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just the test. It's just the test of, you know, how this, uh, how this business can move forward. I mean, essentially, it's almost like you could, uh, you could prey on people's charitable um, natures to actually fund what you're doing by paying one dollar fifty a month, you know, because they love the idea of what you're doing, you know, and and there is certainly still a great deal of uh, discomfort within the, within the industry because of the way it's changed over the last 10, 12 years, and the amount of pressure and money that's actually been sucked out of it. I mean, I, I think somebody mentioned it the other day. The person who's paying is the guest. Yeah. You know, the prices have gone up. The, con the conditions probably aren't as good as they used to be yeah. on the personal service level, despite people investing in personal service, because there is less less money in the pot. So it has to be paid for by somebody. You know, so you you have a fantastic message. It's how to engage those people who are going to be the early adopters. You know, the Japanese of the uh, of the blockchain vacation rental world. You know, I think. I'm a great believer in niches, so I think niches are something that can be addressed by the blockchain very well. I think there's a there's a traveling community like yourself. You're a digital nomad, so and that's a small niche, but it's actually a niche. Uh, and even that, I know you've gained some traction on. But as it grows, I see the industry becoming more niche as well. So, you know, people starting businesses, they're not trying to compete on a very, on a global scale. They're trying to compete at local levels and they're trying to compete on, um, on detail with properties. So, you know, your ecos, your pets, your, uh, your luxury, your spas, all this sort of stuff, they're all becoming very niche. And that is something I think trips might find its way into in, in certain sectors. It might be the, uh, the digital nomad, uh, tech travelers who want to stay in we work type accommodation globally you know yeah it could be that, that again going back to what i was saying before what i think there's going to be many many uh, instances like trips doing niches so uh, it's very hard to see how one company can compete against the otas but then if you say that you can have thousands of them and each one of them is really niche and, and serves the niche well uh, then you have a thousand companies who can go against one or two, right? And that's yeah. when they get they become relevant. Uh, and again, it, trips will be just one of them. And we are not trying here to uh, stifle innovation. Every time somebody comes in and tries to do like us, slightly different, we are both attacked and we can learn from them. Uh, maybe they're going to make a mistake and we won't repeat it. Maybe the mistakes we make, they won't repeat. So the whole industry is looking at each other. 
and everybody develops some kind of feature which is open source anybody else can use the same feature so all together we can become much more powerful than the ODAs today is because you know it's an open system so if, if you know about what, how Linux came to life if you've seen how the cryptocurrency started from one in the thousands now you see the dynamics behind that uh, and that's that means 99% of failures again this is startup world at its best so we're gonna see so many failures in the blocks in the blockchain space but every failure was gonna be a lesson yeah no I, I, it, it's definitely going to be a lesson there's no doubt about that i mean one of the things that trips i think has to do it has to get more exposure as well i mean you're 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 personally doing a a lot for the company um the organization i, I don't think you stay in the same place for more than 36 hours i do yeah <laughs> not on much a, more yeah you're on a global campaign right now yeah but possibly to engage one of those niches and what you're doing in terms of the blockchain to benefit them going forward would give you exposure would give you noise and it would not possibly damage one of these uh, aligned partnership companies that you might you might think about and something that could you know could be discussed at a, at a higher level within the company because you need exposure trips needs exposure because you know people are still going blockchain well yeah we try to get a balance between exposure and what actually we can offer. So if you come today on trips, uh, what I've been saying for the last month is like trips is not the 80s. It's, it's, af it's uh, after the war. It's a place where you come and there's you either work or you just leave. There's nothing to do else. Right? There's no solutions to your problems. There's problems, more problems than you have already. So yeah. and as, as the time progresses, it's going to become less a problem, like less a place where you have to do something. And more a place where you get something and i'm talking about bookings uh, yeah, yeah. today and this is a month old uh, today you can actually download the origin app and without paying any gas without having to buy any cryptocurrency without having to learn basically anything you can upload one apartment in 10 minutes yeah and sure. uh, until two months ago just to try to onboard one apartment you know, you had to learn a lot of technology, MetaMask, and then go to Coinbase and buy the Ether. We tried that. I mean, 5% of people would go through and the others would stop. And now I think 50% of people will be able to just upload the apartment. OK, so um, it's too early for ma mass exposure. If everybody comes in trips now, they're going to be like, OK, what can I do? Well, you can upload an apartment. That's all right. So we have to keep this balance. And that's why our view is really long term. Uh, sure. The technology is not there yet to try to attract the whole, you know, the whole industry, the, the, the mass, the mass bookers or, or the industry. So we're taking it s slow. I mean, there's a lot of development behind the scene, but we are not in a hurry to reach everybody right now. What we're doing is like a, we, what we're doing right now is try to talk to the industry and make them understand why this is an opportunity for all of us and to try to get the industry involved. Yeah, I'm just nat naturally impatient, Luca. I want to <laughs> Yeah. I've, we all want to we all want to see some disruption. We all want to see some change because currently everything is heading down a much more expensive route and a less controlled route. We, we can do this much much faster if we get together. Uh, so that's actually my the next month I'm going to start talking about company companies how to get involved and uh, even invest into this because yeah. we can do this much faster if we not, if now we start start getting involved the only thing the only question i have is like pe the only doubt i have i pe i think people still don't understand what it is right you understand it but what what do you think is and that's my question for you what do you think is the state of understanding in this industry for blockchain <laughs> very little yeah you see I mean, they, it's 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 you know people will read a little bit about it and and they'll put the book down after a few pages and they read about it in the newspapers and they they've uh, they associate blockchain with cryptocurrency you know uh, which isn't which isn't correct right. um, so there's very little understanding because everybody's everybody's life in this rental vacation rental world is is a 24-hour business. Mm. And they're just trying to look for something 
which eases their life. So in the, sim in the very simplest way, they don't really care about blockchain. If, if blockchain made them more money and it was easy, they'd probably say, yeah, I'm on the black ch blockchain. I don't worry about anything else, even though they don't understand it. It's like merchant accounts with credit cards. If you look behind the scenes to see how ridiculously complicated that system is, people would have a heart attack. But, you know, in an ideal world, the manager or an owner would say, I've got a property. Uh, I'd like to market it on these 30 different uh, websites. Oh, there's a blockchain one here. They take, their, they take the equivalent of their debit card out of their wallet. They put it in the machine and everything would be uploaded and everything would be kept up to date and the bookings would just come in. So I don't think the technology message is terribly important. It is not, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, what is really important is when you pass the message on is that you're getting, you're getting great value bookings, you know, and it has all the bells and whistles. The reviews are there. And of course, you, you've had all the conversation about reviews. Well, how do you do reviews on a distributed ledger? Who's going to make the decision about this guest who's just trashed my place? Right. Well, we know it's a communal exercise. It's quite hard for people to understand how that can actually happen. Right. Yes. It, you know, even though the, it go, almost certainly Facebook probably does it through technology as well these days. You know, somebody's made a complaint about a company on Facebook. You know, does somebody sit on the end of that right now and make a decision or is it handed off to technology or, you know, a group consensus in some way? You know, you don't really know what's going on, but it's all it's all moving that way. I just think, you know, the blockchain part of it is is progressing as fast as anybody else's uh, way of doing this. Nobody wants staff sitting in offices. If there's any staff out there listening to me, I apologize for that comment. Mm. But large companies don't like staff sitting in offices because they cost money. Right. And generally speaking, it's all about shareholder value. Yeah. And they, they have a duty to it. So, you know, it, again, there's, there's a lot of complexity. And should you describe it or should you not describe it? I Yeah, I think we should pass go past this. We should go past the technology. It doesn't make sense to explain how the engine works just how the car works right um, yeah. but it's normal yeah. at the beginning of every technology there's the only thing you could talk about is the technology because there's no yet car to show but yeah. with this move and i was mentioning the app now when you download the app you're seeing just the app you don't even know you're on the blockchain and that's an incredibly important step the moment we can stop talking about blockchain and we can stop, start talking about solutions then it's when it gets interesting, right? Yeah. But no, we're that's... building now. Now it's like building a city. We're still doing the pipes. So what do you want to talk about? The, the color of, the, of the, the shop you're going to build? It's too early, right? So yeah, yeah. we are in the, again, it's after the Second World War. We have to rebuild. So that, that's where the discussion is. But I understand it becomes really impactful when we can stop talking about that and we can start just using so it's, it's still far away, but it, now is the time to get together, I think, and, uh, and start doing, start getting together as an industry. So let's yeah. see how the industry will react to that. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's the little data functions that are the things that can, can cause stumbling blocks. You know, you, you said this is after the Second World War and you're laying the foundations and the pipes. You know, some of those pipes are, are really important. You don't want to go and have to dig up the street again to replace one of those pipes on the way. Right. So, you know, some of these some of these things are really, really important, but they might not appear to be on the surface. I mean, that's, if you will go back to the Airbnb very first days, you know, and, and companies like that, they I'm sure they sat in um, they sat in board meetings and, and rooms and said, listen, the world is open for rentals. You know, they're only doing it 20 weeks of the year. There's 52 weeks of the year. Well, there's a, there's a misunderstanding already, you know. But they said, okay, all we've got to do is put properties up. All we've got to do is pictures, a few descriptions, and a price, and, and we're going to make money. But it didn't work like that, did it? It took a huge amount of investment, and now it's all morphed into a much more complex environment because all these industries all have slightly 
you know, the hotel, the hotel apartment, the downtown luxury, the, the true vacation rental, the cottage, the yurt, everything has some data requirements. And if you get the data requirements right on day one or 95% right, then the rest, I think, will flow much more smoothly. And you can stop talking about blockchain. You can start talking about, hey, this is going to be, this is going to make you much more profitable because at the end of the day, you're representing owners of properties. They're the ones who want their money. They don't care about the blockchain. <laughs> right. You, know, you still have to, there's still this passage of money. I mean, what I find really interesting is the payment element of what you're doing as well in terms of making payments. Because I see the, I mean, you see the payment industry changing rapidly. So, you know, we have the likes of Revolut, for example, and we have um, digital banking coming through. We've seen Stripe rip apart the standard merchant uh, issue in the likes of Cardnet and people like that. So that payment uh, business is, is being disrupted. Now, one of the biggest complaints about, for vacation rental managers is, oh, I'm paying 3% on a yeah. booking. You know, okay, they've paid 15 or 18% of the booking.com, which doesn't seem to matter, but they've paid uh, between 1.5% yeah. and 3% on a merchant account. So in a crazy way, they're addressing the wrong part of the business, but it's still money. If you, you know, if you turn over 10 million or 100 million, 3% is a lot of money. There's, so, you sorry. know, so this this payment disruption is a huge opportunity, which is kind of interested me in Libra because not only do you create loyalty and you trap your customers, you can actually you can actually play with money too. Uh, so, well, the, our approach is uh, like when this gets really mature and then when everybody's going to have a cryptocurrency wallet, so a few years from now. Uh, First of all, you're not skipping only the OTAs, you're skipping also the whole payment system, right? Yeah. Because it, it doesn't go through any bank. Secondly, the money wouldn't even go through trips. That's something people don't, don't understand because, you know, there's many disruptions at the, main time, at the same time. So it's hard to get all of them. But one of them is that if you make a booking through trips, trips doesn't touch your money. Never. We don't, we have no control on the money. It just goes on the blockchain and then it's released to the guest, to the host, I'm sorry. So you are also taking control of the payments in a real peer-to-peer -peer way, okay? And then usually the next question is, what if something goes wrong, but we won't get into that? Do we have a solution for that? And you made a nice example in common, it's like basically that is decided by the community. But So payments are going to be disrupted by the fact that, first of all, there's no banks involved. Secondly, there's not even the OTA involved. It's just you and the guest. Yeah, but don't don't you think that um, I won't say the banks, but the digital banks, my Revolut card, I can uh, I can buy Bitcoin on it. You know, there's there's this fiat and cryptocurrency merging. So at somewhere in here, at some point in the future, there's very likely to be. I mean, what you just said is is great because the blockchain it'll release it'll release the the currency whether it's a, a crypto or a fiat currency if it releases a crypto it can be exchanged for a fiat and it can be exchanged automatically through yes. digital banking systems yes. and because it's being exchanged and it's not being processed through merchant card providers there's the opportunity to save yourself a lot of money because right now everybody's trying to reduce the exchange fees on things as well and, and attract more business well, so you see disruption there too that opens a whole can of worms because what you see into the fintech world and in the in the cryptocurrency exchanges is actually uh, fees are increasing okay uh cryptocurrency exchanges are the worst of, of both worlds they are the worst of the banks and the worst of crypto so if you, we really have to skip the exchanging crypto for fiat part and but what you're describing with the fintech is the the medium term where Yes, I don't want to get involved with Bitcoin. I want to pay with Euro and I have the card. And then behind the scene, the card will transform it into crypto. In our case, Ethereum, so Ether and go through the through the booking. So uh, there's going to be a moment when either you have crypto or you don't have crypto. As long as you have one of these fintech cards, it's fine. 
they are compatible with the system and that's that's really great only that if you still touch in crypto is going to be more expensive well cu currently currently it's much more expensive you know the yeah. the exchanges make a, a they make their money out of doing that and, right. and uh, you know three five six percent but if you get a stabilized cryptocurrency which let's face it is again is another disruption then there's the opportunity for for the exchange values to go down substantially i mean it's not there yet but who knows what might happen in three five ten years yeah. we, we already accept a stable currency it's called die it's always right. worth a dollar it, it goes from 95 cents to one dollar five in the last two years it never went over and below so we already have solved the volatility problem in a way and when you have this stable price you can also you know you can keep a thousand pounds worth of die in your wallet and you can do your bookings through there forget you forget about the volatility thing so yeah payments are are a big disruptive element in the whole part but it's interesting to notice that this is just a small part of the of what the blockchain can do to the space payments are just one part and what most people do and the, the CEO of booking holders was talking about this the other day most people think it's only about paying in Bitcoin for your booking this is nothing this is nothing compared to what's going to actually happen and it's yeah. really nice i'm uh, very happy i can give this message around because it's like guys this is really nothing expect yeah. much more yeah. yeah it's probably uh it's probably rephrasing the entire message about you know how this is going to work and, and putting it in, in a in a simpler fashion as well and expressing how this is going to make everybody's lives easier and how it's going to make them more profitable and how it's going to dilute the power of, of the major corporations who get more powerful on a daily basis. Have, have you heard about the neo-feudalism? The concept of neo-feudalism, neo neo-tech feudalism? No, I haven't. Luke. All right, this is, look, there's a whole new view on what's happening today in the world is that these big tech companies uh, and I'm talking about the fangs so of Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Booking, etc. Uh, they are the lords, while the kings are the investors. So you got the investors who are the kings, then you have the lords who are the companies, the entrepreneurs, and then you have the serfs, which are us. And why are we serfs? We are serfs because we are working on land we do not own. Tomorrow morning, Airbnb could close your account. Tomorrow morning, Booking could ghost close your account it means you still have you're still online but you don't get bookings and you don't know why and if they close your account they don't even tell you why you know you get this email saying your account's been closed you went again the term against the terms and conditions don't ask us why bye bye your bookings are cancelled your reviews are cancelled so we're working on somebody that's land the king's land there's no rule of law here right so what we're trying to build with with the blockchain is like let's build a a new ecosystem, a new land where rule of law rules, right? So reviews are owned by the people who wrote them. Listings and profiles are owned by hosts and property managers. And yeah. nobody can come and say you're out. It's, everything is based on smart contracts. It's, it's, it's passing from the Middle Ages to the, you know, Illuminism and, and the, the, the democracy and the, the rule of law we live into now. So that's a new feudalism. And the, the idea is that everybody's going from having a job to having a gig. And the, the perfect example is the Uber driver, who when he gets from 20% commission to 30% commission, can't do anything. And we're seeing the same thing happening in our space when conditions get worse for us. All we can do in go, is go in some Facebook group and complain. Right, and you have no. We don't have leverage. We we, no. we can't strike. You know, you just accept it and complain. So the only way out is to build something alternative where there's not one person deciding, but but it's decided by mathematics and network. Yeah, that's the idea. So neo federalism. Yeah. Check it out. It's 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 getting really worse day by day. Yeah, it's made me feel great on a. Uh... On a Tuesday morning to be called a sir. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a view. Check it out. It's, it, when the first heard it, it was like, oh my God, this is so bad. And I don't want to have this view. But it kept coming back at me because it actually fits the model very well, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. So on the, I think on this happy note, we may end. <laughs> <laughs>
unless you want to add something to to bring to cheer out cheer us up a bit no i'm no it's, it was great luca i mean it, we're you know we're in an environment where yeah these large companies uh, dominate what we're doing and uh they play a part there's no doubt about it they do play a part and and that's what's incentivizing change too if they weren't there there'd be no no need to change so you know it's uh it's enterprising it's interesting uh, you're not controlled by third parties so i think the message probably needs to be changed from tech to you know something more in in incentive to incentivize people to actually engage with the process which is an emotional play it's uh aren't you fed up with this would you like to help change it this is going to solve the problem don't worry about what we're calling it how it works but tell you what it's fantastic and it's going to cost you a fraction of what's currently happening you I know agree. i agree so. with that Anyway, yes. Uh, thank you, Luca, and I'll thank see you, you in Como. <laughs> thank you, Richard. See you in Como. Have a nice right. day. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye. Bye. Bye.